Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Offenberg, pastor at Jordan Lutheran Church in West Dallas, Wisconsin. It is the second Sunday of Easter. Grace, mercy, peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of our Savior, Jesus, fellow redeemed. Those of you who are baseball fans might remember the name Bill Buckner. Bill Buckner played uh, largely during the 70s and 80s. Uh, his career was quite lengthy, but most productively in the 70s and 80s. Uh, he had a lifetime batting average of 289 and uh, had the fourth most assists uh, as a first baseman in the history of all of baseball. Bill Buckner began his career in left field, but later on switched uh, to first base and became a really good first baseman. In 1986, Bill Buckner was a member of the Boston Red Sox. He batted 299 that year with 102 RBIs, which uh, helped lead the Boston Red Sox to the World Series that year, 1986. But Bill Buckner, unfortunately, is not so much remembered for all the good things that he did, all of his accomplishments, but for the fact that in 1986, during the World Series, he allowed a ground ball to go through his legs, and that cost the Red Sox the whole World Series. It's unfortunate that uh, he's not remembered for all those accomplishments, but for that one error. And that's kind of the way it is with the man in the text that we're going to consider today from John chapter 20. Thomas was a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, a disciple. He believed in the Savior, of course. But unfortunately, he's probably always going to have that nickname, Doubting Thomas, uh, because he was a bit skeptical of the Lord's resurrection. But what most people forget is the fact that all of the followers of Jesus, all of those disciples, had their doubts about the Lord's resurrection. The Bible tells us that early on that first Easter morning, the women went to the tomb, they saw the Lord Jesus alive, they went back and told the disciples, you know, he's risen, he, he, he lives. And the Bible tells us that those disciples considered uh, their account to be nonsense. So here Jesus had risen from the grave. Uh, he had uh, shown his victory over sin, death, and the devil. Our salvation had been accomplished. All those disciples should have been filled with joy and excitement. But they were plagued by doubts. Easter, of course, was last week. And, and Easter really is the highlight for Christian people. Uh, we ought to, on every Easter, have joy and excitement that the Lord Jesus he, he lives and, and he rules over all things for the good of his people and, and for his church. But, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that uh, this Easter probably was a little bit different. Uh, maybe our joy and excitement was a little bit muted this year uh, because, well, for some of us, maybe it was loneliness uh, with all of these stay-at-home orders, uh, this social distancing that we're practicing you know, we couldn't get together for worship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, we couldn't get together with family and friends. So, so maybe the devil used that a little bit uh, for you to uh, mute your joy, to put a wet blanket on, on the joy of Easter. You know, for other, others of us, it, it's probably just the, the problems and, and pains that we're going through right now. Uh, a lot of people out of work. Uh, maybe you lost your job. Maybe you're under financial stress. Uh, maybe you have physical ailments or problems that are just really plaguing you and, and bringing you down. You know, whatever it is, we live in a world of hurt, hurting people, and, and so often the devil will use that to, to drive a knife into the joyful heart of a Christian. But I'm going to suggest today, as we take a look at Thomas a little bit, uh, one of the biggest killjoys for Christian people, the, the thing that can really rob us of our joy in the Lord Jesus Christ, not only at Easter time, but, but at any time of the year, are those spiritual doubts that we tend to have sometimes about the Lord Jesus Christ. Thomas was wondering, and probably a question we've all wondered uh, at times, you know, can I really be sure about Jesus? Can I really trust what he tells me in his word? You know, with all these problems around me and, and all the things that plague me, uh, can I really be sure about what he tells me in his word? So for our comfort and for our strength, 
uh, today from John chapter 20. The Lord Jesus comes to us through his word and uh, he kind of erases all of those doubts. He, he comes to us in the midst of those doubts and, and first of all, uh, he reminds us today that he understands those doubts that we go through and secondly, uh, he lives to erase all of those doubts. First of all, Jesus understands those doubts that we have. He knows that we're sinful people. We have a sinful nature. Uh, Jesus understands the doubts we have. I think that's made really clear on that first Easter morning. Um, it's interesting to note and, and really comforting, I think, too, to, to note that when those women came to the tomb early on that Easter morning, uh, they were carrying in their hands uh, the burial spices and all the things that they needed to finish the job of burying a dead Lord Jesus. And when Jesus uh, sees them, he doesn't chew them out. He doesn't yell at them uh, for their lack of faith uh, because Jesus understands the doubts that we have. It's also made clear later on that Easter evening uh, when he appears to the ten disciples who are cowering behind locked doors and he appears to them and he says, peace be with you. He doesn't spend a half an hour lecturing them about their lack of faith and their doubts. He says, peace be with you. Jesus understands the doubts that we have. And made clearer still when he tells us in this 20th chapter of John's Gospel about Thomas and, and the rest of those disciples. Thomas wasn't there the first time that uh, Jesus appeared to those disciples that first Easter evening. It was 10 disciples. And, and later on, Thomas had said to the rest of those disciples, look, unless I put my, my fingers into the nail marks and my hand into his side, I'm just not going to believe it. He was really skeptical that Jesus had risen from the grave. And so then a week later, Jesus appears to those disciples again and then reassures Thomas that he had, in fact, risen from the grave. But uh, Thomas is typical, uh, a typical example of, of, of how Jesus, you know, he doesn't chew Thomas out, doesn't scream at him later on. Uh, he understands the doubts that, that Thomas and those disciples had. And so, you know, as it was back then, so it is today, Jesus understands the doubts that we have. And, and all of us, we've all had those doubts. Uh, in the midst of physical problems and pains, I think we've all wondered at times, boy, does, does Jesus really know what I'm going through? Uh, all this pain I'm suffering and these problems just keep lingering. Uh, does he understand? As we look around in our world today and everything seems to be in chaos and, and uh, just uh, everything out of control, uh, we wonder, we kind of have doubts, is Jesus really in control as he says he is? That he promises that he's going to work everything out for the good of his church, and, and sometimes we have those doubts. Uh, the problem is, though, Jesus also knows where those doubts can lead us. You think of those women that first Easter morning, they were you know, filled with tears and anxiety uh, because they were going to finish the job of burying Jesus those doubts have led them, you know, that anxiety and those worries. Uh, the disciples, their doubts led them to, to just paralyzing fear. And our doubts can lead us uh, to things like worry and, and fear and, and, and to, to paralyze us when it comes to serving the Savior in his kingdom. And the devil knows that he, he takes those doubts that we have and he really plays on those and, and that, wants to lead us to fear and, and to get us to wonder about Jesus' care and his concern. So Jesus understands the doubts we go through and where those doubts can lead. How comforting it is then that, that we read in, in John chapter 20 that Jesus was there to erase the doubts, not only that Thomas had, but the rest of those disciples had. We're told that Jesus appears uh, in that room about a week later, the second time and Thomas is there and he says to them again peace be with you and that's really key uh, the Lord Jesus wants us to have peace he knows those doubts can lead us to to anxiety and worry and fear and stress and so he says peace be with you and and 
very gently and lovingly, Jesus begins to erase the doubts that Thomas specifically had. And he says to Thomas, Thomas, here, put your, your fingers in, in, in my hand. Touch my hands. Put your, your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Now, I have no idea if Tom, uh, Thomas actually did those things. We don't know what Thomas did, but we do know what he said. You know, with the living Lord Jesus standing there in front of him with, with the scars and everything, Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Jesus dealt with his doubts and he raised those doubts. And you know what? Through his word, Jesus promises he's going to raise our doubts too. Through that word, we're told all the details we, we need to know about how Jesus lived for us and how he died for us, how he took our sins upon himself and, and paid for all of those sins on the cross, how he rose again on, on Easter morning to reassure us that those sins are forever forgiven and forgotten. On and on in his word, he reminds us that we have eternal life in him, that we have nothing to worry about, that he'll not only take care of our physical needs, he'll be with us in life through his word to take care of our spiritual needs. Through word and sacrament, Jesus is there to strengthen our faith, to draw us closer to him. And I know people, people say, well, you know, it's one thing to read the Bible, but it would be better to see Jesus. Seeing is believing. But let's remember that that word of God in the Bible, those words have power. God's Holy Spirit uses those words, that gospel message, to strengthen our faith, to dry our tears, to erase all of those doubts, to get us to the faith uh, point where we have a faith, the confidence that Thomas had, a no longer doubting Thomas. And let's remember also that that powerful word of Jesus sustained and strengthened those followers and disciples of Jesus after he ascended into heaven. That powerful gospel message, the word of Jesus, moved those disciples and followers of Jesus to really turn the whole world upside down with their preaching as they went out with the word of Jesus, as they taught, as they preached the law and the gospel to people, and, and people were brought to faith, brought into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus can and will use that same powerful word as we open up our Bibles, as we hear the word, as we read that word. Jesus is going to use that same powerful word to draw us closer to himself, to make us joyful, happy, confident followers and believers. So on this second Sunday of Easter, the Savior, your Savior, the Lord Jesus, comes to you with a very simple message. He says, I live. I am risen from the grave. I live to rule over all things for your good. Don't be afraid. Everything's going to be okay. I'm here to bless you and keep you always. I am yours, you are mine, he says, and I will be with you to take care of you, and one day I'm going to bring you safely to my heavenly home. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that's the simple message of the Lord Jesus. He says, read my word, study that word, and those words are going to lead you also to be people who stop doubting and people who start believing and trusting in him. That's the Savior's simple message today. May God grant that we believe it. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.